What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. Now today we're going to be making a ketogenic granola bar. And the inspiration for this were those Chewy brand granola bars from Quaker. You know the things you had as a kid that had like a granola bar with uh, chunks of chocolate in there and held together with some type of a syrup. It was probably like corn syrup or a caramel, something like that. Well that's exactly what we're going to be making today, but we are going to keep it keto. So if that sounds good to you guys, hang on tight and let's get right into the recipe. Alright everybody, welcome to the recipe for this delicious keto granola bar. Now, here we have in front of us our nut mixture. This is about half the ingredients going in here, but let's step through the ingredients right here. That's going to really form the bulk of this granola bar. So right between these three bowls, I have one and a half cups of nuts. You can use whatever nuts you want, just make sure there is one and a half cups, and you can use whatever blend you want. So I've got half a cup of almond, half a cup of macadamia nut, and half a cup of pecans. Also, if you want them roasted, use roasted nuts. That is totally up to you guys. In here, I have one quarter cup of the unsweetened coconut flakes. Make sure they are unsweetened. We've got one quarter cup of ground golden flaxseed, a quarter teaspoon of pink salt, and two tablespoons of melted butter. Now, what's gonna happen here is the mixture of the coconut and the flax with the butter and salt is gonna form those kind of granola clusters, whereas the nuts are gonna give you the texture. So all we're really gonna do here is we're going to go ahead and dump all of it into our food processor. That was a little loud, sorry about that guys. Now we're gonna add in our coconut and our ground flaxseed. The salt. And then I'm actually gonna pulse this before I add the butter in. So real quick, I'm just gonna put this on, give it a pulse, and now we'll pour in our butter. Now, as I'm pulsing this, guys, I want to make note here. I am not going to get this to the point of like a flour or a powder. You're just kind of cracking the nuts a little bit. Like you're just really trying to break them up into smaller pieces. You want some big chunks. You want some small chunks. It's going to be not uniform. And that is exactly what we're going for. You just want to break them up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and take the lid off here and show you guys what I'm talking about. You see how, you know, the big chunks of nuts still exist. There's some chunks of almond, some chunks of uh, macadamia that I can see. But you can also see how the little clusters are forming from the addition of the butter with that flaxseed and coconut. So now we're actually going to set this aside and work on the binding agent, which is going to be a form of caramel. So let me get that set up and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, in front of us here, you see the ingredients for our kind of caramel binding agent. So we've got another two tablespoons of butter, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one half cup of this allulose blend. I've been playing with this stuff, guys. It is from the People's Keto Company. I will put a link to them in the description because they're also the ones who make the chocolate chips that we're gonna be using later. Um, but this is an allulose blend with monk fruit and stevia. So it actually measures one-to-one -one like um, sugar would, but it has the same kind of properties that allulose provides, like the ability to caramelize and make a nice thick caramel sauce like we're about to do. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and turn our heat on about a medium heat. You don't want to go too hot here and add the butter straight in. And we're just going to stir this till it starts to melt a little bit. All right, guys. So now we have the butter melted. I'm going to add in our half cup of that allulose mixture. Guys, regular allulose will work just fine, but I do really like this monk fruit and stevia blend with the allulose. But again, feel free to use just regular allulose if that's what you got. Now at first it is going to look like there's nowhere near enough liquid with this and that's just kind of a property of allulose. As it heats up it will melt just like sugar and turn into a nice caramel sauce. So let's let this heat up for just a second. So as you guys can see here it's starting to uh, turn into a nice sauce and we'll actually get a little thinner this and turn into a nice caramel color as it starts bubbling. Now I did try to use this with a thermometer to gauge the temperature that this kind of starts to caramelize at and it's about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. But I find that doing it visually is your best bet because uh, getting a thermometer into such a thin layer of sauce is actually pretty hard and you end up getting invalid measurements. So really just stir this until you get that nice caramel color that you're looking for. All right guys, now this is starting to caramelize a little bit and you can see the bubbles kind of coming up a little bit. So at this point I'm gonna add in my vanilla extract. It is gonna sizzle just a little bit and that's actually gonna cause the caramel to uh, puff up just a little bit. Just keep stirring through this. The reason I didn't add it in the beginning was because I didn't want to uh, evaporate off a ton of that uh, vanilla extract and I find that this kind of leaves a little bit more vanilla flavor behind. 
In any case, now that we've done that and it looks like a good caramel color, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that uh, granola mixture that I have in another bowl. So hopefully you guys can see this nice caramel mixture that we have right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and dump it right into our granola. And then with the rubber scraper, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in. Now this caramel is quite hot, so I would uh, recommend at least at this point not touching with your hands. It will cool down fairly rapidly though. Now this has cooled down a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and add some chocolate chips. These are also from the People's Keto Company. I'm not using Lily's this time, and there will be a link to these in the description as well. Um, but there's a half cup of chocolate chips that we're gonna go ahead and just throw in here. Now we waited until now to add these because we didn't want them to melt. If you add them a little bit too early, it'll turn melty and it will turn into kind of a chocolate granola bar, which I'll show you what happens with that in just a second. So now that this looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and set it aside and get myself a four by eight loaf pan. So we have this loaf pan and some parchment paper. Ignore the staining on there, it's because I put it out on the smoker. In any case, we're gonna go ahead and just transfer this right in there and then pack it flat. Now you will notice that a little bit of the chocolate on top has melted and kind of spread throughout it. That's totally fine. I may have just added them a split second too soon. It's kind of a balancing act there. If you really don't want the chocolate to melt, once you've got it packed in there, you can actually just put the chocolate chips on top and then press them down with your spatula. But I kind of like having a little bit melted throughout it. As a side note, if you add them in right as you add in the caramel, you end up with something kind of like this. It's actually pretty cool. Let me show you guys the texture there. Um, but that's what happens if you add the chocolate chips in at the exact same time as the caramel sauce. So there's another option if that is something that you're interested in. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go and let this cool. Uh, you can even put it in your refrigerator if you want, but let it cool until it's completely hardened and then uh, I'll catch up with you guys and we're gonna cut this into bars. All right guys, so I went ahead and had this in my refrigerator for about an hour to allow it to harden up. I did actually add my chocolate a little bit soon for the chocolate chips not to melt. So what I end up with is actually like a mix of kind of the chocolate globs, which I'm all right with that guys. Honestly, like the chocolate in there tastes delicious. Whether you choose to melt it in with the caramel, whether you, you know, wait and sprinkle it on the top so they don't melt at all, it doesn't matter. They're all gonna taste roughly the same. It's just a matter of how you want it to look. So now I went ahead and pulled this out of my four by eight little uh, loaf pan and I'm gonna cut it into bars. Now the end ones aren't gonna be so pretty just because of the rounding of the pan, but that's all right. We're gonna go with eight of them here, um, which is gonna give us, you know, roughly one tablespoon of allulose per bar. If you guys are curious about allulose, by the way, I went ahead and did a full video on that, which I'll put in the card right now. Anyway, let's get these things sliced up. There it is, guys. We have our eight granola bars. Here is kind of uh, what they look like for you guys. And um, I'm gonna let these come up to room temperature before we taste test them because I want them to kind of have that gooey break to them. This one will bend a little bit, but because it's been in the fridge, it's a little bit firmer than it would be at room temperature. So I'm gonna let these warm up to room temp and then I'll catch up with you guys for the taste test. But first, why don't you take a look at our finished product. All right, everybody. Now that you've seen the recipe and the finished product, it is time for the taste test. Now, after I cut these, I realized that I actually had only melted the chocolate on the top layer and that was probably just for me trying to smooth it out. But inside, it's actually really well marbled, which is pretty awesome. And I also hope that I'm able to use my green screen effect because I was filming earlier today in a green shirt and totally didn't think about that when it came to using the green screen. So we'll see how this turns out. In any case, guys, it is time for the taste test. So I have one of our granola bars right here and I'm gonna give it a bite. Those are freaking delicious, guys. You bite into it and you get a nice texture from that kind of caramel sauce we made that holds it together. It really makes you think you're biting into a real granola bar. Then you get the crunch from the nuts and then that kind of soft bite from the chocolate. It's absolutely phenomenal. And the best way I can describe it is a cross between those Kudos bars and a Chewy bar. And if you're in America, those are two popular brands. You probably know what I'm talking about. But these are hands down probably the best keto granola bars I've ever had. And they're the only ones who really achieve that texture of a granola bar. So I'm really happy with this recipe. Now, when it comes to storing these things, I tend to just put them in individual bags, lock them up in the pantry, and they're good to go. I've also stored them in the fridge for a little while to make them last a bit longer and then pull them out as I needed them. But I like to eat them when they're kind of room temperature. That way, they're a little bit gooey and not quite as hard. 
But that guys, I'm gonna go and close the video. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments for me, leave them down in the comment section. And of course guys, if you are curious about allulose or the blends of allulose or chocolate chips that I have used in this video, there will be a link down there to an informational video on allulose that I made not too long ago, which will give you guys some more information and make you feel comfortable with the ingredient if you've never used it before, as well as a link down there to a place where you can buy this bundle of the sweetener that I use in this video, as well as the chocolate chips that I use. It's from a new company that I've been kind of trying out. So if you guys want to try that and let me know what you think, that'd be awesome too. But with that, guys, I'm going to go and close the video and I will see you in the next one.